So welcome back. So I've erased quite a bit of our working, but by the end of the previous video, what we had concluded is that we had found a big K, and which is a natural number, such that for all K prime that are greater than or equal to K, we can conclude that the sum from N is equal to K prime plus 1 to infinity of the MNs is modulus less than epsilon, i.e. is an element of the interval from negative epsilon to epsilon. And now what we're going to do is claim that this k works for our uniform convergence criterion of our series of functions to our limit function f. So what I need to do then is take a k prime that is greater than or equal to k, and I need to show you that the k prime, k prime term in this sequence of partial sums is within this epsilon interval of my limit function, i.e. that the modulus of the limit function f minus my k prime partial sum, so the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of the functions fn, that the modulus of that difference is less than epsilon for all x is an element of my domain. And I'll do this for a general k prime that is greater than or equal to this value of k that I've found such that it satisfies this, and hence, if I can do that, I will have shown that for a general epsilon, I can find a k such that for all k prime that are greater than or equal to k, this holds true, and hence I will have proven the uniform convergence criterion for this series of functions converging to the limit function f. So I'm actually now going to do some manipulations that are very similar to the manipulations that I did for the M series, or the sequence of partial sums of the M series in the previous video. So this time I'm going to do them for the sequence of partial sums of my series of functions. So here is that sequence of partial sums. So we've got F1, F1 plus F2, then it would be F1 plus F2 plus F3, and then it goes on to the k prime term in this sequence of partial sums, which is the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of fn, and then the term after that, which is the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime plus 1 fn. And this sequence of partial sums converges to the function f, meaning that at all points x in the domain d, this sequence of real numbers converges to the value of f at that point x. What I can again do, because this is just a whole bunch of sequences of real numbers at each one of the x points, again, it's true that I can get rid of a finite number of terms from the front of the series without it making any difference to what, sorry, of the sequence, without it making any difference to what the sequence actually converges to. So I'm actually going to get rid of the first k prime terms of this sequence here and just start from here and then keep the same infinite tail of the sequence and that will still converge to f at all x values in your domain d. So this is the new sequence I've got here. So it begins with sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime plus 1 of fn and then second term is sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime plus 2 fn and this sequence still converges to f for all x is an element of the domain d. So hopefully you might be able to guess what I'm going to do next. I'm going to subtract off from my sequence that I've got here the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of fn. That's a constant sequence which will be convergent for all x within the domain and it will converge to the, this function sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of fn. Um, so I've got two sequences that are convergent everywhere in my domain, therefore when I subtract one from the other, I'll end up with another sequence that is convergent everywhere in my domain. And this is the sequence that I'm going to end up with. So it begins with the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to k prime plus 1 of fn, then sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to k prime plus 2 of fn, and it will continue on, that you'll then go up to k prime plus 3, k prime plus 4, etc. And this sequence is going to converge, and it's going to converge the difference between the two limits, which is going to be the function f minus the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of fn, which is what my constant um, series of functions converge to. And you'll notice that this is very interesting because this limit here, this limit function over the domain D, I'm very, very interested in that. That's what I've got here. This is the thing that I'm trying to prove has modulus less than epsilon everywhere over my domain. So it's very nice and interesting that I've got that as my limit function for this sequence of functions.
Now we could rewrite this sequence of partial sums of functions that we've got here in series notation. So it's the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity fn. And this is now a convergent series of functions and it converges to limit function f minus the finite sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of fn. We're very interested in the modulus or absolute value of this series then, sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of fn, because of course it's equal to this, and we're interested in the absolute value of that. We want to know that for all x in your domain, that that is less than epsilon. So we want to know that this is less than epsilon for all x in your domain. And we're going to use the fact that we know that the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of the mn's is... Uh, has modulus less than epsilon, is within the epsilon interval around zero to show that. Now, for each x in your domain, it is the case that this thing that we're interested in, the modulus of this series, is less than or equal to what you would get if instead you took the series of all of the moduluses of the terms of the series. So sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of mod of fn. So remember that these are series of functions, but series of functions are just loads and loads of uh, series of real numbers where you have a different series of real numbers for each x that you input in. So imagine taking a specific x. Here you've got the... you do the whole series you do that sequence of partial sums, take its limit, and then take the modulus of that limit. And here, instead, you take all of the terms of the series and take their modulus and sum them all up. Take that sequence of partial sums and take that limit, and the limit of that is going to be greater than or equal to this. And the reason that that's true is this inequality that I've written here. So... What we've got in the middle is our series here, sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of fn. And again, imagine taking a specific x point in your domain, because then you don't have to worry about it, thinking about it as a series of functions. You can just then think of it as a series of real numbers when you've evaluated at x. And this is always going to be less than or equal to the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of the mod of fn. And it's always going to be greater than or equal to the negative version of that. So the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of minus mod of fn. So this middle one here, some of the terms might be positive, some of them might be negative, And of course, the negative ones are going to cancel with the positive ones. What we've got here is we're making every single one of them positive and then, if you like, adding them all up. Here what we're doing is making every single one of them negative and then adding them all up. So there's no cancellation here. This is the biggest possible thing you can end up with and this is the smallest possible thing you can end up with. And here you're going to end up somewhere in the middle where you've potentially got some positive and some negative that are going to cancel each other out so that you end up in the middle. Now these things that I've written out here are of course the limits of these sequences of partial sums, but if you think about the actual sequences of partial sums, which I've written down a little bit of them here, you can understand why the limits are going to end up with these inequalities. So here's the sequence of partial sums for this one, where we're taking the limit of this to get this value. So you've got the mod of f1, mod of f1 plus mod of f2, and then here's the middle one where you've got f1 f1 plus f2, and then f1 plus f2, f plus f3. And then here's the last one, where everything's negative, minus mod of f1, minus mod of f1, plus minus mod of f2. So you can see that this term is always going to be greater than or equal to this term, which is going to be greater than or equal to this term. So for each one of the corresponding terms, this inequality holds true. And therefore, for these entire sequences, the corresponding terms, this one is greater than or equal to this one, which is greater than or equal to this one, and therefore the limits also will obey those inequalities. If you have the case that you have these inequalities for all the terms, all the corresponding terms in sequences, then the limits also end up obeying those inequalities. So that's how I'm able to conclude this. And of course you can see that this one is less than or equal to this, and it's greater than or equal to this,
and this one here is just minus this because this sequence that you've got here is just minus of this one and therefore its limit is going to end up just being the minus of this one's limit. So because it's less than or equal to this and greater than or equal to minus this, I can therefore say that its modulus is less than or equal to the positive version, which is this. So now what we're going to do is use the comparison test. So I know that the mod of fn for all x in my domain is always less than or equal to the corresponding n value, so mn. And that works for all n going from k prime plus 1 to infinity. And I can therefore conclude that the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of mod of fn whatever x we're talking about is always going to be less than or equal to the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of mn. So now, of course, what we're going to do is come back and use this fact that we showed earlier about the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of the mn's. Now, actually, we do need to tinker with this a little bit because I forgot to use a bit of information earlier. I wish I had. I'm sorry for this. What we did earlier is perfectly correct. You can conclude that this is within the interval negative epsilon to epsilon, but actually you can conclude something stronger than that. You can actually conclude that it's in the non-negative part of that interval, so the closed interval from zero to epsilon is where it actually is. And the reason you can do that is because you know that these mn's are always non-negative. That's the bit of information I forgot to use earlier. So when I was concluding that this could be in this interval from negative epsilon to epsilon, and I said, oh, that difference between the limit L and the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of the mn's could be negative. It couldn't have been. It was always going to be non-negative because of the fact that this series is all non-negative terms and therefore the sequence of partial sums is a monotonically increasing sequence. So the limit minus one of the terms in the sequence was always going to be a non-negative value. So that was an unfortunate omission earlier. What we concluded was perfectly correct, but we need something stronger than that. We need to know that it's in the non-negative part of this interval. But hopefully you'll forgive me for that, you can see that these terms are all non-negative, so clearly this um, sum, or this sequence of the partial sums, is always going to converge to something that is non-negative. So this is within this part of the interval. So now I can conclude that this is strictly less than epsilon, and then by transitivity I can conclude that the thing that I'm interested in is strictly less than epsilon. And this argument works no matter what x you pick within the domain. Therefore, I know that this thing, which is equal to this thing, is less than epsilon, which is exactly what I needed to prove. So to conclude, what I have shown is that if you take any epsilon greater than zero, you can go along to some k is a natural number such that for all k prime is greater than or equal to k, this is true, that the sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of mn is less than epsilon. It's going to be uh, non-negative, so greater than or equal to 0, but less than epsilon in size. And you can always find such a k because of the fact that this series converges to this finite value. So, uh, for whatever epsilon, there will always exist a k such that the tail end of the series beyond that k um, converges to something that is less than epsilon. Then what you can do is use this same k on your series of functions, and you can show that if you go beyond that k, i.e. you go to some k prime that is greater than or equal to that k, and you look at your uh, partial sum your k prime partial sum, then the distance that that k prime partial sum function is from your limit function is always less than epsilon everywhere on your domain d. That means that this series of functions does satisfy the uniform convergence criterion and converges to f uniformly. As whatever epsilon you take, I can always find a k such that if you go to that term or beyond in the sequence of partial sums, all of those terms of that sequence of partial sums 
are within epsilon distance of the limit function for all x is in your domain. So we've shown then that if the Weierstrass m-test criterion is fulfilled, then you can conclude that the series of functions converges uniformly to your limit. And with that, we'll end the video there. Thank you very much for watching.